So I've been a fan of the Yeezy Foam Runner for over a year at this point, since the shoe first came out. And I think for me, the reason that I love this sneaker so much is not just because it looks insane. It's also because overall, it's a great shoe. It's insanely comfortable, it's obviously very breathable, and for some reason, it's extremely durable. I've been wearing this shoe so much over the last year, and it still looks, other than some of the dirt smudges, like it's brand new. So last week, when my pair of Yeezy Knit Runners finally came in, I was expecting to love this shoe. I was expecting to love it as much as, if not more so, than the Foam Runner because it looked like an actual shoe versus this which is more of a clog. But over the last week I decided to make the Yeezy Knit Runner the only shoe that I would wear and I would wear the shoe every single day no matter what I was doing. And I realized that I just really don't like this shoe. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and these are my thoughts on the Yeezy Knit Runner after wearing it every day for an entire week. So right off the bat, why don't we tackle the elephant in the room and that's the aesthetics. So the Yeezy Knit Runner is a weird looking shoe to say the least. In fact, over the last week or so that we've actually known about this sneaker and had it in hand, there's been no shortage of memes. Whether that's someone photoshopping this shoe onto the feet of someone from Dragon Ball Z or maybe making it look like Homer Simpson or even just calling it a banana, this shoe is a shoe that's very easy to make fun of. And when I first saw the Yeezy Knit Runner, I didn't know what to think, but I did know that I wanted to give this shoe a shot and go in with no biases. It was the same thing for me with the Yeezy Foam Runner. It was a shoe that I wasn't sure how to feel when I first saw it, but then once I actually got it in hand and wore it, and wore it a bunch, I realized that I love the shoe and I love the way it looked. But unfortunately, after a week of wearing the Yeezy Knit Runners, I can't say the same thing. I don't love the way this sneaker looks. Now I will say that I don't think it's just a silhouette shape issue. I realize the shoe looks like a bean. I realize that it looks like you're wearing I don't know what on your feet, but for me, I think the biggest problem is the color. Now, I've been saying for years that I really wish Adidas and Yeezy would give us some more colors when it comes to their Yeezy sneakers. And every time that they do, it's never exactly what I had in mind. And in this case, that's the problem. This is not a color that I would have put on this shoe. I'm glad that they're making yellow Yeezys. I think that's great. If we could have a pair of yellow 350s, I would be down with that. But for this shoe, I feel like they needed to start off with a more neutral color because the shoe itself is so crazy that you need something to kind of ground it in reality and make it something that's not so insane. And on a personal note, it was really difficult for me to find anything that matched with this yellow. Like, I didn't really have anything that made this shoe look normal on my feet. Now, I will admit, these shoes don't look that bad in these B-roll images with the brand new Apothecary 3.0 socks that are dropping this Friday, but you know what? Honestly, I really think that's just because the socks are fire. <laughs> By the way, if you missed out on our very first Apothecary 3.0 drop because it sold out in nine minutes, that's crazy. Thank you guys so much for the support. We do have another Apothecary 3.0 drop happening this Friday at apothecary.com. We actually have this sick brand new promo video for that collection which you guys are watching a little bit of right now But if you guys want to check out the whole video It'll be at the end of this video and again if you missed out on the first drop and you want some pairs of apothecary 3.0s The drop is this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time on apothecary.com But short of wearing these shoes with apothecary socks I don't see much saving them. This is a weird looking sneaker Now I will say that I do like the indentation on the medial side of the shoe where they sort of stitch in the midfoot of the sneaker to the foam midsole I think that's a nice touch and it gives the shoe some much needed detail on the side of the sneaker otherwise it literally would just look like a bean a pinto bean maybe but other than that it just looks like you're wearing an oval on your foot a very simple shape on your foot which is weird because from the side of the shoe you only see this sort of weird oval shape but when you look at it from the top it's got this really nice form to it it's very thick in the front very thin in the middle and then very thick in the back again which is a shape that actually looks really great from the top but when you see it from the side, it doesn't really translate as well. Also, even though the shoe looks like there's a lot of room in there, there actually isn't. And that's because there's this giant foam substrate in the sneaker that really takes up most of the space inside this shoe. But we'll get to that more later on when we talk about the fit of this sneaker. So while we're still on aesthetics, I do kind of want to talk about the finishes on the outside of this shoe. So as I mentioned in the review of this sneaker, this bottom half of the shoe is seemingly dipped in yellow paint. And because of that, it has this very sort of stiff and rigid exterior. The knit portion around the ankle in this off-white color is very soft and very stretchy, whereas the knit on the rest of the sneaker, which is just hard and very stiff. So while I don't really have a problem with the bottom half of the shoe being painted knit, I don't think it really affects the way the shoe feels on foot, I do have to say that it picks up scuffs very, very easily. The texture of this shoe is kind of like a very rough paper, and because of that, if you scratch it against anything, it's gonna pick up marks. I mean, I've got these black marks all over the front of the sneaker just from regular wear that I don't have on any of my other shoes because they don't pick up marks the way that this does. And unfortunately, because this knit is an absorbent material, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna get that out. I'm hoping that the paint has kind of protected the knit a little bit, but 
I'm not 100% sure. I feel like it's always going to be a little bit stained up there. And I think that's true for every painted part of the shoe. In fact, if you look on the inside of the medial side right there, I must have hit my foot against something because you've got this black smudge, which I can't get rid of. And I think in a lot of other colors, that wouldn't have been a problem. Like if this bottom portion of the shoe had been a dark color of some kind, you wouldn't have noticed these scuffs as much. But because it's a bright yellow, you see them very easily. And very quickly, this shoe is going to get gross and dirty. And the more that I wear this shoe, the more that I wonder what this shoe is for other than fashion and making a fashion statement. And my problem is, if it doesn't look good, and there aren't too many scenarios in which this shoe would look good, it doesn't even work as a fashion statement. Hey, but that's my own personal opinion. I don't love everything that Kanye puts out, but overall, I think he's done a pretty great job of releasing insane sneakers. And I think even though this shoe looks insane, um, it's going to be a very popular shoe nonetheless because of the hype and because of the visionary that I think we all agree that Kanye is. Maybe you don't, but you have to admit that he has made major waves in sneaker culture. But now let's get to the next aspect of this shoe, and that's the one that I think most of you will be interested in, and that's comfort. Is the Yeezy Knit Runner a comfortable shoe? And I would say overall, Pretty comfortable. So I've got to be honest, when I first tried this sneaker on, I was pretty let down. And the reason for that was because when you look at this shoe, it looks like it's going to be insanely comfortable. I mean, it's bulky, it's thick, it's knit. You'd think it'd feel like you're wearing a soft knitted blanket on your foot. But in reality, it feels like you're wearing a foam brick on your foot. And while that's not the most uncomfortable thing in the world, it's nowhere near as comfortable as I think most people would like it to be. What's weird is that with the foam runner, I had no expectations of comfort. I expected it to feel like a weird plasticky crock, but when I tried this shoe on, I was blown away by how soft and comfortable it was underfoot. The Knit Runner, on the other hand, though, is the exact opposite of that. I was expecting it to be incredibly comfortable, and it's not that comfortable on foot. I mean, it's not even as comfortable as a pair of, like, NMDs. I mean, to be fair, you do have a foam midsole underneath your foot, so you do get some cushion under your foot. Then you've got this really weird sort of foam toe area on the shoe, which I guess protects you against kicking things. I that's really all I got. The problem with this foam portion on the front of the shoe is that it really compresses your toes. Like it really comes down on your feet. And what's interesting is that I bought this shoe a half size up, which is what Adidas recommends. They even recommend maybe going up a full size. And it's still compressing my feet and making me feel like my feet are kind of like confined in this tiny space. And I have pretty narrow feet. I'm afraid for someone who has wider feet because they're not going to have really any space in this shoe. And again, it looks like it would be an extremely wide foot friendly shoe, but it's not, it's a very narrow sneaker. The heel portion of the shoe also features that same sort of foam that you have in the midsole and the toe of the sneaker. I actually think they're all connected, almost like in a U shape underneath the shoe from the top of the toe all the way up to the back of your heel. It's an interesting way of designing a shoe. I've never seen a shoe done like this before and I had a friend mention on Instagram that he wanted to cut the shoe open and see what was inside and I actually would like to do the same thing. However, I paid $700 for this shoe so I will not be doing that. Also, actually, I may be listing the shoe on eBay after this if you guys want to grab this shoe because I don't think it's for me. Not through in the end of the video but I'm going to be honest. Uh, if you guys want to grab this shoe on eBay, make sure to click the link in the description below. But unfortunately, my expectations of comfort were dashed when I actually tried this shoe on. I mean, it felt like I was wearing a foam glove on my feet. And the only really soft part about this shoe was the knit around the top of the ankle, which by the way, if you wear short socks or socks that don't have good padding on the back of your ankle, this will chafe your foot. I mean, this really did dig into the back of my foot when I wore short socks. It was kind of crazy. Which brings up another point. You can't really wear this shoe without crew length socks or long pants. Like, this is not a shoe that looks good in shorts with no-shows. It just doesn't. It kind of makes it look like you're wearing Donald Duck feet. And that's not even an original comment of mine. I actually saw that like seven different times in my Instagram post. It looks like a Donald Duck foot shoe. It's a weird looking sneaker. And I know I'm getting hype about it, but honestly, like, the more I think about this sneaker, the less I like it. Now, I will admit that over time, over a week of wearing this shoe, the foam did soften up a little bit. Not a huge amount. You're always going to have a giant slab of foam on top of your feet, but it did get a little bit softer underfoot and a little bit softer around my toes. It's still not very soft, though. It's still not a soft sneaker by any stretch of the imagination, but it got more bearable as time went on. And not that this shoe is completely uncomfortable, but I don't know, man. It's such a weird sneaker. Everything about it, the comfort, the aesthetics, everything about this shoe is weird and uh, something that I don't really see myself wearing after this. Now, weirdly enough, I did actually try to run in this sneaker because I saw someone comment on the review that I should try running in this sneaker and what that's like. I'll show you guys some really weird B-roll right now in this shoe. As you can tell, there is absolutely no lockdown in the sneaker, which makes sense because it's a slip-on that uh, doesn't fit that great. There is a little bit of heel cupping because of that foam around your heel, but it's not that great, and you will sort of slide out of this sneaker if you decide to run in it. I honestly don't know why you would do that. You probably paid too much money for this sneaker and if you ran in it it would destroy it and that'd be a waste of money and regardless there are so many better options for running in I I just don't see why you'd ever run in this sneaker but hey you know what 
if you have to do it, that kind of sucks because it's not that great for that. Now I will say that the overall traction of the shoe was actually pretty decent and that's because you've got a really great traction pattern, this sort of herringbone pattern, and there's a lot of surface contact because the shoe is very flat. Now I'm not sure exactly about the rubber compound, I don't know how good of a rubber compound it is, but I will say that the shoe did grip very well and if they use this traction pattern on basketball sneakers, that'd probably be pretty great. But as you can probably tell, this is not a basketball sneaker. This is presumably purely a lifestyle sneaker and a not very comfortable one at that. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention before rounding off the video, and that's that it seems like the upper of this shoe is glued to the outsole of the sneaker, as well as being stitched to the midsole. The more that I wore the shoe, the more I heard this sort of like creaking sound, not really creaking, but like separation sound. And I think that's either the knit exterior of the shoe separating from the outsole, because I think that it's actually just wrapped around the foam and then glued to the outsole, or that's the knit separating from the foam inside the sneaker. And the sound that I'm hearing, I think is like the glue that's trying to stick those two pieces together, but kind of pulling apart. It's a weird sound, but I hear it all the time and it does kind of annoy me. And I don't know if I just got a defective pair or something, or maybe all of them sound like that because it's a newer sneaker and they're still working out the kinks. I don't know what it is, but it kind of bothered me. It was really annoying to hear. I don't know. That was just a weird side thing I wanted to throw in there because it was something that actually did kind of piss me off. So I guess to round off the video, I should give you my final thoughts on the Yeezy Knit Runner and sort of conclude everything with a should you buy or should you not buy. And I think the most obvious thing is that if you don't like the way the sneaker looks, don't buy it. There's not much else about this sneaker that's gonna make you like it. So if you don't like the way the sneaker looks, or if you don't have to complete a Yeezy collection, then don't buy it. As you guys know, we haven't seen any other colorways of this shoe as of yet. And in my opinion, I think it is possible that this could be the only one to release. I have no basis for that opinion, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. It's just such a weird looking sneaker, and I feel like Kanye and his team were just trying to try something that was different. And if that's the case, I actually really respect this shoe because I think Kanye and his design team are incredibly talented. And if you were to put this shoe in terms of cars, I think this shoe would be like a concept car that somehow made its production, whereas most shoes are shoes that are based on concept cars, but those concept cars never see the light of day. The Yeezy Knit Runner feels like a concept shoe. It feels like a concept of what the future of footwear could be. Do I think the shoe will fit in as of right now? Probably not. But at the same time, Kanye's got an insane hype effect on people and I think that there will be a lot of hype beasts out there who will be wearing this shoe on a pretty regular basis. But in my opinion, I just don't think this shoe has the staying power as something like the Foam Runner, which to be fair is an even crazier looking shoe. That shoe has a lot of things going for it. It's comfortable, it looks crazy, and it's priced at only $80. The Knit Runner is nowhere near as comfortable as the Foam Runner and it's a lot more expensive. The retail price of this shoe is $200. I mean, overall, it's not a bad shoe. It still works. It's not uncomfortable. It protects your feet from the elements and keeps your feet in relative comfort, albeit maybe a little bit hot because it is a pretty warm sneaker. But for me, one of the biggest sticking points is the price point. Right now, the shoe retails for 200 bucks, which is a lot of money, but because this is the only colorway of the shoe to release, it's even more expensive on the resale market. I mean, we're talking 500 to $700 for something that's essentially a fat sock. And unfortunately, not a very comfortable sock, unlike our Apothecary 3.0 socks, which dropped this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy Knit Runner and what you think about this shoe. Is this something that you think that the future of footwear could look like? Is this something that you would ever buy? Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.